Hi there, this is Bianca Lopez and I am saying hello all the way from Hangzhou in China. Slightly jet lagged but super excited to share with you my second post about all the background research that I do before I come to a country. And um, thank you so much for commenting on the last Dubai one. So this time a little less intimate, it's not my hotel room, is Hangzhou's a prominent university which is apparently under the top three most leading universities in the country. Hangzhou has caught me by surprise. It's this most romantic, cute city, but in the heart of the digital transformation that China is undergoing. So let's talk about that. So every time I look into a country, I look at what is the identity infrastructure and what is the role of the government and technology companies as those tend to be the nerds that I'm fascinated about. So everybody talks about a over surveillance state and you'll see on my post some more information about that. But to tell you the short cold notes, version of it. Uh, the Chinese government has actually allowed big tech to pave the way. So when you think about China, think about that. So Baidu, Alibaba and Tencent are the three largest tech giants controlling most of China's technology infrastructure. And when we think about those three, they have actually led a way into building commercial platforms that are being used by the government for things like identity information and access management. And believing in a state of over surveillance has these three companies building some pretty interesting tech. So let's talk about that. So between the three and some large massive unicorns, China is leading its way on calling themselves the leading AI by 2030. And they've been investing heavily and to me it's pretty obvious that this stuff is going to happen. When I came here, I kind of always test. I always bring my Neobank digital cards and a good stash of cash, feeling like a bit of a drug dealer. I carry around both. And to my surprise as a human being, I cannot use any of my digital banking cards that I had. None of Europe, none of Brazil, none of the US. I was only allowed to use WeChat and Alipay. WeChat is run by Tencent and actually has what's called WeChat ID, a combination of facial recognition technology and voice print using some pretty basic authentication uh, onboarding creations. I had to read a bunch of numbers and I had to make sure I was in a quiet place for my WeChat ID. And it's actually a bigger form of identification in the hotel registration than my passport. When I told them I had WeChat ID, they preferred it in an instant heartbeat. And all they proceeded to do was scan my card and their system was done. And I'm not talking about a sci-fi movie here. I'm talking about a pretty basic hotel that I stayed in. And then I proceeded to figure it out what was happening to my Alipay. Alipay is run by Alibaba for those of you who don't know. And Alipay also uses a facial recognition application and a voice print to create your ID. And then it allows you to connect to cards, um, actually my Spanish card, my England card, and some other, my European cards weren't allowed to be connected to my Alipay ID. I was only able to connect my Brazilian cards and some of the ones in Eastern Europe. And um, after Rev created that, now I had my Alipay ID. And Baidu, which is the third letter of my bat, actually is the prominent search engine. So think about it as your Google or your Safari in China. It's the only one that actually allows me to surf anything. And it's using facial recognition alongside with airport security and boarding passes. I wasn't able to experience that because I don't have a Chinese government ID and wasn't able to register because half of the onboarding registration was in Chinese and my Chinese isn't that great. <laughs> I'm actually learning a few words, but it takes time. But let's talk about back to identity. So when you think of identity and sort of the startup world in China, alongside this AI massive wave, there's the three largest startups and they're all just poor people valued over a billion dollars each. The world's largest and most valuable AI startup, according to my research, is SenseTime. SenseTime is, is valued over $4.5 billion. And SenseTime plus U2, Y2 technologies, I'm probably murdering it, and Face++ are the three leading facial recognition and biometric technologies out there that are used as the basis of the infrastructure used by government and these commercial massive platforms. SenseTime actually works with local police bureaus to identify criminals. U2 technology is actually used for facial recognition and it was responsible for catching a lot of criminals after the Shanghai Metro um, accident 
and FaceTime Plus Plus is used in trains and railway stations. And when you think about that, it gets you going on the digital credit score that the government has allowed to um, measure and track people. So being surveilled all the time is actually pretty commonplace here in China. And when talking to some of the Chinese locals, uh, it got me thinking and it gave me a different level of perspective. They look at it as saying, if I trust the government and the government has my best interest at heart and I'm a good person, why should I care about me being surveilled? There's nothing that I have to hide and they're there to protect me and to keep the bad guys out. So I'll leave you that for thinking because I'm still puzzling and wrapping my brain around it coming from a Western society where the sense of consent is an overused word and all these big companies tell us to trust them. And I won't get started on my whole idea of how much I trust my social channels, but hey, I liked using them and they give me value. So is this whole idea of identity a trade-off between how much of a me am I giving for how much am I getting? I don't know because it kind of scares me the idea that the government could deduct points that could enable me or avoid me from actually being able to have the right to speak, the right to move, the right to do anything. Actually, it can go as far as you not existing. I talked to somebody here that told me that because their credit score had been so bad that they had been taking points for their bad behavior. And the bad behavior was according to the conduct of the communist government party. So if you had an opposing view, does that mean you don't have the right to have a credit score? Here it does. This guy went as far as telling me that he couldn't go and take and purchase train tickets because the train ticket station was using basic identity credentials that are also run by the same commercial platforms that the government uses. Therefore, his face was recognized and his train ticket was for him no longer available. It impeded his right to move. So when I talk about identity and meaning that is a catalyst or an impediment, this is what it means when an infrastructure is interoperable and it talks to each other. And then the question becomes, in whose hands does it go? Is this building an ex-surveillance state? I'm actually, as I say it here, probably quite afraid of getting arrested in the border because I'm sure somebody is listening. But that's what it means to look at identity in China. So my question to you today is, other than all the information and the juice that I looked at as looking as the identity platform infrastructures, I'm gonna get a chance to ask these people, what is their identity infrastructure made of? And why are they taking facial recognition into account? When I arrived into the country, I had no other choice but to register. Otherwise, they would pretty much not let me in. So now does it mean that, that the Chinese government can make a whole new one of me? I don't know. I'm not sure what it means yet, and I'm really excited to explore. And leave your comments and let's keep talking. And I will say hello to you mid to next week, all the way from India. Cheers, and I'll see you next time. Be in the know.